All right, Rad Nation. Today we're going to give you the rundown on the components of a CT scanner. Starting now at How Radiology Works. We want to talk through how these components work on a CT scanner. So we're going to go through point by point and talk about each of the components quickly on a CT scanner. A lot of the components we have separate videos that we're going to refer to as well. For a CT scanner, it's actually just a piece of x-ray equipment that's specially designed to take x-ray images while rotating around. So the first thing we need is actually a rotating gantry. So we have a stationary gantry and we have a rotating gantry. A lot of the components that we're going to be talking about here today are actually mounted on this rotating gantry so that as the gantry is rotating, these components all are going to be also rotating around the patient. First off, the x-ray tube is mounted to the rotating gantry. So the x-ray tube is critically important because the x-rays are actually what we're going to be measuring. We're going to be measuring how the x-rays pass through the body and the proportion in which they stop in the body. Like we've talked about before, our CT image is actually just an image of what we call the x-ray attenuation coefficient as the x-rays are passing through our body. Basically, how are they differentially absorbed between the different materials in your body? Here are a video on the x-ray tube for the details of how the x-ray tubes work. After the x-ray tube, there's some filtration. We're gonna talk about both flat filters and bow tie filters. So first we're gonna talk about flat filters. The idea is actually just a flat piece of metal and that's gonna be attenuating the x-rays as they pass through. So the x-rays will often talk about a spectrum of x-rays because x-rays are emitted from that x-ray tube, not just at one energy, but at many energies. A filter will attenuate the beam. So there is actually less x-rays that are gonna pass through after a filter. This is an example of a strong filter, such as a tin filter, for instance. So you can see here that there's significantly fewer x-rays passing through and the spectra is actually more attenuated at the lower energies. So the effective energy after this filter is actually higher than before the filter. So again, after a filter like this, there's fewer photons making it through and they have a higher effective energy. Other kind of filter that's very common is what we call a bow tie filter. We call it a bow tie filter because of its effective shape. We're gonna go through real quick how it has that effective shape Imagine you didn't have this kind of a bow tie filter. Your x-rays would pass through the body and as they pass through the body, you can see that on the outside, they're actually passing through less material than on the inside, right? Typically, you're gonna be passing through more material on the inside and less material on the outside. So you would get a shape that looks something like this. So, what we often will do is we'll just imagine your body is made up of a cylinder of water. And then how would we design a filter to basically have the inverse property of this? So we would like to attenuate the x-rays opposite to the way that your body is gonna attenuate the x-rays. You would get a bow tie profile that looks something like this. You're gonna actually need less attenuation right down the middle and then more attenuation at the outside. The idea is that after the x-rays pass through the bow tie filter and then they pass through the patient themselves, that it's actually relatively flat when they get to the detector. It was actually very important in the early days of CT, wherein the dynamic range of the CT detector was not as high as it is on today's detectors. Dynamic range specifies the range of values that can be measured on the detector relatively well. If your dynamic range isn't that high, then you need to get the input to be relatively consistent. The background for bow tie filters, and on the very early days of CT, they would actually surround the head with a water bag in order to make sure that you had a relatively uniform attenuation. After those two sets of filtration, actually comes the collimators. Imagine you're standing behind the CT scanner and you're looking down into the bore. That's what this angle that we're looking at here is. So the next feature is actually the collimator and it's an opening set of blades. We have another video where we talk about collimation on x-ray systems, but in CT, you typically just have an opening set of blades coming from the top and the bottom. 
you typically don't have the side to side opening jaws. You use that bow tie filter to do your attenuation within the plane. Here's an example if you're looking at it from a given angle. Again, we talked about you could have these two jaws essentially for your collimator so that the x-rays below and above would be attenuated. If we look from the side, we can see it looks something like this. We have our x-ray tube, our x-rays are coming out, and then they're going to be attenuated by the collimator. Typically, we'll specify the collimation of the system at the ISO center of the system. Again, this is not the scale. We're really blowing up this component to make it look exaggerated, but we're typically talking about the collimation right at the ISO center. So on the state-of-the-art CT systems, the widest coverage we have is 160 millimeters at the ISO center. That's the widest collimation you would have. And then on that same system, you just move those jaws down to make it a little narrower, you can get 100 millimeters. And then you move those jaws down even more narrow, you can get 20 millimeters. So any of the collimations that are offered, they're all accomplished just based on moving those jaws. And the actual x-rays are actually being produced the same way. Because on the wider collimation scans, you're using a greater fraction of the x-rays, it's actually lighter on the two heating. When you use your narrower collimation scans, you're collimating down or rejecting a greater fraction of those x-rays. Now the beams pass through the filters, it's passed through the collimator, and finally we have a scan window. It's very necessary in order to prevent bodily fluids such as blood or vomit from getting onto the detector and into the gantry. The scan window will be a material which would stop those bodily fluids from getting in. Also want it to be relatively good at passing the x-rays through and it also needs to pass the laser light through. So there's also lasers that are used for the alignment, setting up the patient positioning. There's typically an outer and an inner laser. For the outer lasers, there's actually gonna be a hole in the gantry cover that is gonna be on the outside and doesn't have to pass through that scan window. And then for the inner lasers, there's actually gonna be a little ring that you, you'll be able to see where the laser light can visibly pass through that scan window. This is just a, a picture of a scan window sitting on just a regular gray carpet. It's kind of a nondescript piece of equipment. And after you get through the scan window, now the x-rays can finally go through the patient. So this is where we talked about before, you have differential contrast between the different types of materials, and that's what's gonna help you generate your CT image via photoelectric and Compton interactions in the patient. And depending on where the x-ray tube is, if the x-ray tube's in this position, it's gonna be passing through the patient first and then through the table. When the x-ray tube comes around, it's gonna be passing through the table first and then through the patient. So here's an image of the table on a standard CT scanner. Again, if you see our other video, we walk through and show the table, it basically comes up so the patient can get on it easily and then goes into the bore in order to do our volumetric scanning. The table needs to be strong enough to hold relatively large patients, but again, you don't want it to attenuate a large fraction of the x-rays as they're passing through. And the x-rays are incident on the detector array. See our video about CT detectors, where you'll learn how the x-rays come in. They're converted from x-rays to visible light photons, and then those visible light photons are measured and converted to an electrical current, which is then digitized at the CT detector. Now that you've seen the pictorial view, you know all the different components, definitely check out our view from within the scan room where you can see the images of all of these pieces as they sit on the gantry and as we move the table up and down, for instance, on an actual CT scanner.